Chapter 7, Country Living The Divine Ideal Although everything God had made was in the perfection of beauty, and there seemed nothing wanting upon the earth which God had created to make Adam and Eve happy, yet He manifested His great love to them by planting a garden especially for them. A portion of their time was to be occupied in the happy employment of dressing the garden, and a portion in receiving the visits of angels, listening to their instruction in happy meditation. Their labor was not wearisome, but pleasant and invigorating. This beautiful garden was to be their home, their special residence. Spiritual Gifts, Book 3, page 34, 1864. What were the conditions chosen by the Infinite Father for His Son? A secluded home in the Galilean hills, a household sustained by honest, self-respecting labor, a life of simplicity, daily conflict with duty and hardship, self-sacrifice, economy, and patient, gladsome service, the hour of study at his mother's side with the open scroll of Scripture, the quiet of dawn or twilight in the green valley, the holy ministries of nature, the study of creation and providence, and the soul's communion with God. These were the conditions and opportunities of the life of Jesus. Ministry of Healings, pages 365 and 366, 1905. Away from the cities. Get out of the cities as soon as possible and purchase a little piece of land where you can have a garden, where your children can watch the flowers growing and learn from them lessons of simplicity and purity. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 356, 1903. Out of the cities is my message at this time. Be assured that the call is for all people to locate miles away from the large cities. One look at San Francisco as it is today would speak to your intelligent minds, showing you the necessity of getting out of the cities. The Lord calls for His people to locate away from the cities, for in such an hour as ye think not, fire and brimstone will be rained from heaven upon these cities. Proportionate to their sins will be their visitation. When one city is destroyed, let not our people regard this matter as a light affair, and think that they may, if favorable opportunity offers, build themselves homes in that same destroyed city. Let all who would understand the meaning of these things read the eleventh chapter of Revelation. Read every verse, and learn the things that are yet to take place in the cities. Read also the scenes portrayed in the 18th chapter of the same book. Manuscript release, 1518, May 10, 1906. Fathers and mothers who possess a piece of land and a comfortable home are kings and queens. Adventist Home, page 141, 1894. Cities to be worked from outpost. As God's commandment-keeping people, we must leave the cities. As did Enoch, we must work in the cities, but not dwell in them. Evangelism, pages 77 and 78, 1899. The cities are to be worked from outpost. Said the messenger of God, Shall not the cities be warned? Yes, not by God's people living in them, but by their visiting them, to warn them of what is coming upon the earth. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 358, 1902. For years I have been given special light that we are not to center our work in the cities. The turmoil and confusion that fill these cities, the conditions brought about by the labor unions and the strikes, will prove a great hindrance to our work. 
Testimonies, Volume 7, page 84, 1902. When iniquity abounds in a nation, there is always to be heard some voice giving warning and instruction, as the voice of Lot was in Sodom. Yet Lot could have preserved his family from many evils had he not made his home in this wicked, polluted city. All that Lot and his family did in Sodom could have been done by them even if they had lived in a place some distance away from the city. Evangelism, page 78, 1903. For the present, some will be obliged to labor in Chicago, but these should be preparing, working centers in rural districts from which to work the city. The Lord would have his people looking about them and securing humble, inexpensive places as centers for their work. And from time to time, larger places will come to their notice, which they will be able to secure at a surprisingly low price. Evangelism, page 402, 1906. Rich blessings in a natural environment. We say again, out of the cities. Do not consider it a great deprivation that you must go into the hills and mountains, but seek for that retirement where you can be alone with God and to learn His will and way. I urge our people to make it their life work, to seek for spirituality. Christ is at the door. This is why I say to our people, do not consider it a privation when you are called to leave the cities and move out into the country places. Here there await rich blessings for those who will grasp them. By beholding the scenes of nature, the works of the Creator, by studying God's handiwork, imperceptibly you will be changed into the same image. Selected Messages, Book 2, pages 355 and 356, 1908. Character Development, Easier in the Country. Parents flock with their families to the cities because they fancy it easier to obtain a livelihood there than in the country. The children, having nothing to do when not in school, obtain a street education. From evil associates, they acquire habits of vice and dissipation. Testimonies, Volume 5, page 232, 1882. Send the children to schools located in the city, where every phase of temptation is waiting to attract and demoralize them, and the work of character building is tenfold harder for both parents and children. Fundamentals of Christian Education, page 326, 1894. The cities are filled with temptation. We should plan our work in such a way as to keep our young people as far as possible from this contamination. Adventist Home, page 136, 1902. It is time for our people to take their families from the cities into more retired localities. Else, many of the youth, and many also of those older in years, will be ensnared and taken by the enemy. Testimonies, Volume 8, page 101, 1904. There is not one family in a hundred who will be improved physically, mentally, or spiritually by residing in the city. Faith, hope, Love, happiness can far better be gained in retired places where there are fields and hills and trees. Take your children away from the sights and sounds of the city, away from the rattle and din of streetcars and teams, and their minds will become more healthy. It will be found easier to bring home to their hearts the truth of the Word of God. Adventist Home, page 137, 1905. Better physical health in rural environment. It is not God's will that his people shall settle in the cities where there is constant turmoil and confusion. Their children should be spared this, for the whole system is demoralized by the hurry and rush and noise. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 357, 1902. To many of those living in the cities who have not a spot of green grass to set their feet upon, who here, year after year, have looked 
out upon filthy courts and narrow alleys, brick walls and pavements and skies clouded with dust and smoke, if these could be taken to some farming district, surrounded with the green fields, the woods and hills and brooks, the clear skies and the fresh, pure air of the country, it would seem almost like heaven. Ministry of Healing, page 191 and 192, 1905. The physical surroundings in the cities are often a peril to health. The constant liability to contact with disease, the prevalence of foul air, impure water, impure food, the crowded, dark, unhealthy dwelling places are some of the many evils to be met. It was not God's purpose that people should be crowded into the cities, huddled together in terraces and tenements. Ministry of Healing, page 365, 1905. Raise your own provisions. The Lord desires his people to move into the country where they can settle on the land and raise their own fruit and vegetables and where their children can be brought in direct contact with the works of God in nature. Take your families away from the cities is my message. Selected Messages, Book 2, pages 357 and 358, 1902. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions, for in the future the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again. Get out of the cities into the rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 141, 1904. Locate institutions just out from the large cities. Let men of sound judgment be appointed, not to publish abroad their intentions, but to search for such properties in the rural districts, in easy access to the cities, suitable for small training schools for workers, and where facilities may also be provided for treating the sick, and weary souls who know not the truth. Look for such places just out from the large cities where suitable buildings may be secured, either as a gift from the owners or purchased at a reasonable price by the gifts of our people. Do not erect buildings in the noisy cities. Evangelism, page 77, 1909. Bong, New South Wales. Where shall our Australian Bible school be located? Should schools be located in the cities or within a few miles from them, it would be most difficult to counteract the influence of the former education which students have received in regard to these holidays and the practices connected with them, such as horse racing, betting, and the offering of prizes." We shall find it necessary to establish our schools out of and away from the cities, and yet not so far away that they cannot be in touch with them, to do them good, to let light shine amid the moral darkness. Fundamentals of Christian Education, pages 310 and 313, 1894. Everything about the place had impressed me favorably except the fact that we were far from the great thoroughfares of travel and therefore would not have an opportunity of letting our light shine amid the moral darkness that covers our large cities like the pall of death. This seems the only objection that presents itself to my mind. But then it would not be advisable to establish our school in any of our large cities. 8. Manuscript Release, page 137, 1894. I am more than ever convinced that this is the right location for the school. 8. Manuscript Release, page 360, 1894. Huntsville, Alabama. Those who have charge of the schoolwork at Graysville and Huntsville should see what can be done by these institutions to establish such industries 
so that all people desiring to leave the cities can obtain modest homes without a large outlay of means and can also find employment. Letter 25, 1902. It was in the providence of God that the Huntsville School farm was purchased. It is in a good locality. Near it there are large nurseries, and in these nurseries some of the students have worked during the summer to earn money to pay their expenses at the Huntsville School. Special Testimonies, Book B, 12, page 11, 1904. The Huntsville School Farm is a most beautiful place, and with its 300 and more acres of land should accomplish much in the line of industrial training and the raising of crops. Special Testimonies, Series B, 12X, page 13, 1904. Recently the question was asked me, would it not be well to sell the school land at Huntsville and buy a smaller place? Instruction was given me that this farm must not be sold, that the situation possesses many advantages for the carrying forward of a colored school. Special Messages, 359-1904. Barron Springs, Michigan. I hear that there is some thought of locating the school at Berrien Springs in the southwest of Michigan. I am much pleased with the description of this place. In such a place as Berrien Springs, the school can be made an object lesson, and I hope that no one will interpose to prevent the carrying forward of this work. 4. Manuscript Release, page 407, July 12, 1901. The good hand of the Lord has been with our people in the selection of a place for the school. This place corresponds to the representations given me as to where the school should be located. It is away from the cities, and there is an abundance of land for agricultural purposes and room so that houses will not need to be built one close to another. There is plenty of ground where students may be educated in the cultivation of the soil. Review and Herald, January 28, 1902. In moving the college from Battle Creek and establishing it in Berrien Springs, Brethren Magan and Sutherland have acted in harmony with the light that God gave. They have worked hard under the great difficulties. God has been with them. He has approved of their efforts. 4. Manuscript Release, pages 260 and 261, 1904. Stoneham, Massachusetts. The Lord, in His providence, has opened the way for His workers to take an advanced step in New England, a field where much special work should be done. The brethren there have been enabled to arrange to change the location of the sanitarium from South Lancaster to Melrose, a place much nearer Boston, and yet far enough removed from the busy city so that the patients may have the most favorable conditions for recovery of health. The transfer of the New England sanitarium to a place so convenient to the city of Boston is in God's providence. When the Lord sets his hand to repair the way before us, God forbid that any should stand back, questioning the wisdom of going forward or refusing to give encouragement and help. The removal of the New England sanitarium from South Lancaster to Melrose has been presented to me as being directed by the Lord. Special Testimonies, Series B, 13, Page 3, 1902, Tacoma Park, Washington, D.C. The location that has been secured for our school and sanitarium is all that could be desired. The land resembles representations that have been shown me by the Lord. It is well adapted for the purpose for which it is to be used. There is on it ample room for a school and sanitarium without crowding either institution. 
The atmosphere is pure and the water is pure. A beautiful stream runs right through our land from north to south. The stream is a treasure more valuable than gold or silver. The building sites are upon fine elevations with excellent drainage. One day we took a long drive through various parts of Tacoma Park. A large part of the township is a natural forest. The houses are not small and crowded closely together, but are roomy and comfortable. They are surrounded by thrifty second-growth pines, oaks, maples, and other beautiful trees. The owners of these homes are mostly businessmen, many of them clerks in the government offices in Washington. They go to the city daily, returning in the evening to their quiet homes. A good location for the printing office has been chosen. Within easy distance of the post office, and a site for a meeting house also has been found. It seems as if Tacoma Park has been specially prepared for us and that it has been waiting to be occupied by our institutions and their workers. Signs of the Times, June 15, 1904. The Lord has opened this matter to me decidedly. The publishing work that has been carried on in Battle Creek should for the present be carried on near Washington. If after a time the Lord says, Move away from Washington, we are to move. Review and Herald, August 11, 1903. Madison, Tennessee. I was surprised when in speaking of the work they wished to do in the South, they spoke of establishing a school in some place a long away from Nashville. From the light given me, I knew that this would not be the right thing to do, and I told them so. The work that these brethren, E.A. Sutherland and P.T. Megan, can do because of the experience gained at Berrien Springs is to be carried on within easy access of Nashville, for Nashville has not been worked as it should be. And it will be a great blessing to the workers in the school to be near enough to Nashville to be able to counsel with the workers there. In searching for a place for the school, the brethren found a farm of 400 acres for sale about nine miles from Nashville. The size of the farm, its situation, the distance that it is from Nashville, and the moderate sum for which it could be purchased seem to point it out as the very place for the school work. We advise that this place be purchased. I knew that all the land would be ultimately needed. Review and Herald, August 18, 1904. Mountain View, California. Instruction has also been given that the Pacific Press should be moved from Oakland. As the years have passed by, the city has grown and it is now necessary to establish the printing plant in some more rural place where land can be secured for the homes of the employees. Those who are connected with our offices of publication should not be obliged to live in the crowded cities. They should have opportunity to obtain homes where they will be able to live without requiring high wages. Fundamentals of Christian Education, page 492, 1904. Mountain View is a town which has many advantages. It is surrounded by beautiful orchards. The climate is mild, and fruit and vegetables of all kinds can be grown. The town is not large, yet it has electric lights, mail carriers, and many other advantages usually seen only in cities. Letter 141, 1904. Some have wondered why our office of publication should be moved from Oakland to Mountain View. God has been calling upon His people to leave the cities. The youth who are connected with our institutions should not be exposed to the temptations and the corruption to be found in the large cities. Mountain View has seemed to be a favorable location for the printing office. Country Living, page 29, 1905. Loma Linda, California. We thank the Lord that we have a good sanitarium at Paradise Valley, seven miles from San Diego, a sanitarium at Glendale, eight miles from Los Angeles, 
and a large, beautiful place at Loma Linda, 62 miles east from Los Angeles and close to Redlands, Riverside, and San Bernardino. The Loma Linda property is one of the most beautiful sanitarium sites I have ever seen. Loma Linda Messages, page 141-1905. Loma Linda is a place that the Lord has especially designated as a center for the training of medical missionaries. Letter number 188-1907. Here there are wonderful advantages for a school. The farm, the orchard, the pasture land, the large buildings, the ample grounds, the beauty, all are a great blessing. Loma Linda Message, Number 310-1907. This place, Loma Linda, has wonderful advantages, and if those who are here will faithfully avail themselves of the advantages to become true medical missionaries, they will let their light shine forth to those that are around them. We must seek God daily for His wisdom to be imparted to us. Letter number 374-1907. Here we have ideal advantages for a school and for a sanitarium. Here are advantages for the students and great advantages for the patients. I have been instructed that here we should have a school conducted on the principles of the ancient schools of the prophets. Physicians are to receive their education here. Medical Ministry, pages 75 and 76, 1907. Anguin California. As I have looked over this property, I pronounce it to be superior in many respects. The school could not be located in a better spot. It is eight miles from St. Helena and is free from city temptations. In time, more cottages will have to be built for the students, and these students themselves can erect under the instruction of capable teachers. Timber can be prepared right on the ground for this work, and the students can be taught how to build in a creditable manner. We need have no fear of drinking impure water, for here it is supplied freely to us from the Lord's treasure house. I do not know how to be grateful enough for these many advantages. We realize that the Lord knew what we needed and that it is His providence that brought us here. God wanted us here, and He has placed us here. I was sure of this as I came on these grounds. I believe that as you walk through these grounds, you will come to the same decision, that the Lord designated this place for us. One manuscript release, pages 340, 341, and 343, 1909.